Hello everyone, welcome to the course Data Structures. Let me introduce myself and Tulsi Chitra, Associate Professor, Department of CSIT, MLR Institute of Technology. Let us see the overview of the course. Here we are going to study about what is, why to study the data structures, what are the prerequisites for the course, what is the definition of data structure? What are the different types of data structures we have? What is an abstract data type? What is list edit? Then we will be seeing about array and what are the advantages and disadvantages of arrays. Let us look into first what is data structure or why to study the course data structure. The course data structure will provide you to improve the programming skills and this will be coping with the current demands of IT industry and you will be knowing that how to use the data structures and how to write programs on that and it also helps you to develop large programs and you can solve some complex problems also. Based on this, you will be getting some idea that you will you can able to write an efficient programs and you become an efficient programmer and what are the prerequisites for the course when you want to study about a particular course you, you need to have some basic knowledge on it what is required to study the course data structures the only basic knowledge what you require is about the c language then let us see what is the definition of data structure yes a data structure is a way of organizing the data to perform the operations efficiently. What is meant by organizing? Organizing of data is nothing but you are going to maintain the data in the form of some structure. If the data is in a structure format, then you can perform the operations in an efficient manner like you can perform the insertion, then you can perform deletion, searching, sorting. At the same time, we can perform traversal or display. These are the different operations you can perform on the data which is in an organized fashion. And if it is, if the data is in organized way, then you can perform all these operations in an efficient manner. Let us come to what are the classifications of data structures. As a basic, the data structures are mainly classified into two types. One is primitive data structures and another one is non-primitive data structures. What are primitive data structures or? The basic data types what we are going to see in our C language, those are nothing but the primitive data structures. Those are nothing but int, float, care, double and we have so many data types. All those comes under the primitive data structures. And what are non-primitive data structures? Under non-primitive data structures, we will be looking into these categories. Those are nothing but it is again classified into two types. One is linear and another one is non-linear data structure. While coming to the linear data structure, again it is classified into two types. One is static and another one is dynamic. We will be discussing about what is static and dynamic when we are going to the next, next sessions. Then we will be discussing about static and what is dynamic. Under static, again, we have the concept called arrays and in dynamic, we will be discussing about list, stacks and queues. These are the different dynamic data structures we will be seeing. While coming to the non-linear data structure, we will be seeing about graphs and trees. Let us look into the next important concept that is called abstract data type. Before going to see about the abstract data type, let us look into what is a data type and what is an abstract data type. Let us see the difference between the data type and abstract data type. 
then we will be discussing about what is an abstract data type. In short, we are going to represent abstract data type as ADT. <coughs> data type, data type is a predefined one. Data type is a predefined one and abstract data type is a user defined one. User defined. And in all our programming languages, we are going to use our data types. In all programming languages, we are going to use data types. And here, this data type can hold only one value at a time. Only one value at a time. While where we are going to see about ADT, here it can hold more than one value at a time. More than one value, one value at a time. And not only that, in abstract data type, we are going to perform some set of operations. Set of operations. Let us consider some group of integer values where we are going to perform some set of operations like addition or subtraction or multiplication or division. Any of these operations you want to perform. On this, on this, when you are going to perform some certain operations, those operations are going to be hidden. The implementation part of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division are going to be hidden. That is nothing but abstract. The implementation part is going to be hidden from the user. That is why it is called it as abstract. Right? This is an abstract. Now, in our data structures, we are going to use this abstract data type. That means we are going to hide the implementation part from the user. Now, all the data structures what we are what we are going to use in that we are going to have this abstract data type. Now, let us look into the definition or the representation of abstract data type, what it consists of. An abstract data type is composed of a collection of data followed by set of operations and that means on collection of data we are going to perform the set of operations and in short we can represent ADT as data plus operations. Then let us look into what is this list ADT. List is nothing but it is a group of elements arranged in a sequential manner. You will be having the group of elements. Those are going to be arranged in a sequential manner. In the continuous manner, we are going to store. In memory, we can store this list in two ways. What are the two ways we have to store the data? One is store the elements in a sequential memory locations. That is one method is by using arrays. And the second one by using pointers or links. By using this method also, we can store the data sequentially. That method is nothing but the link list. Now, let us look into what is an array. Array is nothing but it is a collection of similar data items or elements stored in a contiguous memory locations under a single name. This is the definition of an array. And we will see how to represent it and what is how we are going to store the elements in the continuous memory locations? We will see that one. Before going to see about the representation of an array, let us see what are the characteristics of an array. The first character is array is a static data structure. That means the size, whatever you are going to specify for an array, is fixed. It may not be expanded or it may not be compressed. That is the meaning of the static. How we are going to declare an array? Array can be declared in this way. One is representing based on the data type followed by array name and specify the size. This is how the example is. The data type we are going to represent it as int and the array name as a 
and phi represents the size of your array and array index starts from 0 to n minus 1 we always represent an array it should start from 0 and it ends with n minus 1 coming to the memory allocation in arrays how the memory will be allocated and let us see how the definition is correlated with this array allocates memory in a continuous memory locations for all the elements let us look into this this is an array where its size is of a of 5. We have specified int a of 5. Based on this, what will happen? It is going to allocate the memory for 5 elements. We can store 5 elements into this array. Right? And how it will be stored? Based on the indexes as well as the addresses. The index starts from 0 onwards and it ends at n minus 1 that is why we are representing up to a of 4 and the elements we are we can store into this array are 10, 20, 30, 40 and 50 and the memory addresses how it has been allocated based on the size of your data type the memory is going to be allocated in a sequential fashion that is 1000, 1004, 1008, 1012 and 1016. Like this way, the, the array is going to be represented. Now, what are the advantages of arrays? First advantage is, in arrays, the elements can be accessed randomly by using the index number. As we have seen in the previous example, here, all arrays are going to have some index. That is, A of 0, A of 1, A of 2, A of 3 and A of 4, like this way. Now, if I want to access the element 30, then directly I can give A of 2. Based on this, I can access the element 30. Otherwise, if I want to access the element 10, in that particular case, I can use A of 0 to access that particular element. That represents the first advantage. And the second advantage is this Using arrays, other data structures like stacks, queues, trees, graphs can be implemented. These are other data structures which we have seen in the classification. From that, all these are going to be implemented by using arrays. And one more, two-dimensional arrays are also used to represent the matrices. These are the, where you can represent the matrix and matrices and we can implement that in our programming also. And what are the disadvantages of arrays? The first disadvantage is it is static data structure. That means whatever the size you are going to specify that will be fixed that will not increase or decrease. For example, we have represented int a of 5. How the memory is going to be allocated we have seen. Now, into this array, I am going to store only 3 elements. Because of this, the size is 5 and the remaining 2 spaces, I am not filling anything. That means, here, there will be wastage of memory. There will be wastage of memory. This is because of the static nature, the wastage of memory is going to be happen in the arrays. And the second one is memory leakage. In the memory leakage, let us look into this array. I have specified the size as A of 5 and I have inserted all the elements into my array. Then if I am trying to insert one more new element with the element as 60, in this case, I do not have space here to insert the element into my array. That is why there is a memory leakage. That means there is no space for us to insert the new element into array. And another one is insertion and deletion operations are complex. Why? Because let us look into this example. Insert 5 at location 0. That means I want to insert the element at this location of A of 0 location. That means when I want to do this, I need to shift all these elements to the towards the right and then I can insert I can provide the space over here and then only I can insert the element at 0th position. That means last lot of shifts has to be done to perform the insertion. Okay, This is the logic where you are going to write 
for shifting the elements to the right position and then we are providing the space and we are going to insert the element here. That means here I am moving 32 location E of 3, 22 location E of 2 and 10 to E of 1 and then I am providing the space I am going to insert the element at 0th position. This is about the insertion. In a similar way when I want to delete an element, here also we need to perform some shifts. Suppose the same thing whatever I have inserted file that has to be deleted. In this case I am going to shift the elements towards left, right? So that I can delete the element and I can move all the elements and place in that particular positions. This is the logic where we can implement when we are going to do the program. Let us see what we are going to, what we have seen in the, in this session. We have seen what is the importance or why we need to study the course data structure and what are the prerequisites for the course. We have seen about this and not only that we have seen what is the definition of data structure and what are its classifications. That means it is divided into two types, right? Uh, primitive, non-primitive, again in non-primitive, again we have linear, non-linear, all these things we have discussed. Then we have seen about the data type versus the abstract data type. Data type is predefined and abstract data type is user defined. These things we have seen and abstract data type will hiding the implementation part of the program. And lastly, we have seen list ADT. Under list ADT, we come across the array concept. And we have seen what is an array and what are the advantages and disadvantages of array. In the next session, we will be looking into what is a linker list and those concepts. Thank you.